Hey, today we want to talk to you about something called Safe Time. I'm Mitch. And I'm Kim with Keeping the Vows. That's exactly right. You did good. And anyway, if you ever stop and think about it, that in a relationship, we tend to build up walls. And what does a wall look like? Well, a wall is something where like maybe, maybe he says something about her mom and she goes, and he realizes, oops, I can't do that anymore. So there's a wall there and you can't communicate about that. And then maybe it gets turned around, you know, and she says something about uh, him and his friends or something, and he lets her know, you can't talk about that. And pretty soon we get these walls built up. And I like to say, if this is everything here that two people can communicate about, if this is all of it, and then a wall goes up here and here and here and here and here and here, pretty soon people come to me for counseling. And a lot of times the only thing that they have that they can still communicate about is their kids. So there's times when I do marriage counseling, I literally have to start by talking about the kids because there's nothing else that they can even talk about. And so that's what it means to build up walls. So we want to teach you how to kick those things down. So first of all, you got to realize that you have walls. And when people come to us for premarital counseling, they don't even realize it, but most all of them have walls. They have things that they don't talk about because it's not safe. Now, believe me, after they get married and that veil comes down, you know, of not being who I really am, then they're going to start talking about these things and they're going to have a little bit of confrontation, maybe a little bit of this, you know. An illustration I want to give you of a couple was there was a couple that that, uh, got married, uh, were married for a year or so, and then it didn't work out. They got divorced. Uh, They didn't happen to come to us for premarital counseling. Um, And so a year or two later, there was a message at the church and the guy came to me with tears and he said, you know, I haven't been God's man. I haven't been the person I should. And I... I've deserted my wife and her daughters. And he said, um, uh, what do you think I should do? And I said, well, does, you know, does your ex still talk to you? And of course, I'm not a real Facebook type of guy. But um, he said, well, she hasn't unfriended me on Facebook yet, which I thought was very funny. But uh, so I said, well, talk to her. So he did. And he, he had her come in. And so I set the first hour and it was she was very respectful. She's very intelligent. But she just looked at him and said, you know, this is what you've done to me. You've crushed me. You've done this. You've done this. And he just sat and listened, which was really, really a smart thing to do. He didn't give any, you know, excuses or anything. He just sat and listened. When they got all done, after about 40 minutes of this, um, she'd gotten everything out of how she was hurt. And he looked at her and he says, I realize you'd probably never want to have a relationship with me again, you know, be married or anything. But for whatever part of a relationship that we could salvage, would you be interested in talking to Mitch and Kim? And she thought about it a little bit, and she said yes. So for the next months, they came and talked to us. And we taught them how to knock down the walls that they built up. The walls were the things that kept them from communicating. And week by week, they'd come by, and they would say, well, this week this happened, this week this happened. And then we went to where they were meeting us every other week. And one week she came in, and she was she's very intelligent. She sat there, and she said, there's this one wall that was up that even before we got married, it was something we could never talk about. And I thought, this has been going pretty good. I want to see if this wall will come down. And so she said, I brought up the subject in safe time. And she said, it came down. I was just astonished that it came down. Well, you gave them several more weeks of this, you know, and they came to us after a while and they were smiling. They were holding hands and they said, all the walls are down. There's nothing we can't talk about anymore. And I thought, yes. So we we coached them some more over the next couple months. And uh, they came to us and said, we'd like to get remarried. Would you marry us? And I said, yes, I'd be delighted to remarry you. And uh, he told me, he said, I'm afraid I'll fall back into the person I used to be. Keep me accountable for that. And so probably, oh, eight months, a year later, I got with him and I said, we had him over to the house and I said, you told me to keep you accountable. How you doing? And they were holding hands and he looked at her and I said, I said, on a scale of uh, one being bad, 10 being great, where's your marriage? And he looked at her and smiled. He said, what do you think? And she said, an eight or a nine. And he said, that's what I was thinking too. So you can put it all back together. If you can kick down the walls, you can come back to be, together in a marriage and probably be happier than you've ever been. So we'd like to, what we'd like to do for you is do a role play that we do. And so uh, uh, this is something that is just made up, but we just want to show it. And we're going to take timeouts and we're going to show you uh, how to do and how not to do safe time. First of all, safe time is something that you do, say you start out once a week or twice a week. And you plan on maybe a half hour or 45 minutes the first time. So you know it's a time when you're going to go and nobody's going to be angry and you're going to be able to communicate and get your thoughts out and you're going to be heard. Well, for a lot of people, that's a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. So um, we uh, we'll, we start out and uh, like this. I'm just going to give you one here. I'm going to throw one out and I'm going to say this to Kim. 
I'm going to say, Kim, um, when we're out with other people and you tell them that I don't make enough money, it makes me feel like I'm less of a man and it makes me feel like I don't measure up and that you don't love me. Okay, now, time out. What is a good thing for the second person to do is her turn to talk now. It, the good thing is to do, use what they call reflective listening. And she's supposed to start by saying, Mitch, what I heard you say was, okay, now I think, wow, this wall is there. It's something we couldn't talk about. Now we're going to talk about this, right? But she keeps it short. She keeps it simple. And she repeats what I said in her own words. You also notice when I did it, I didn't go back, you know, three years. I didn't go get dirty. I kept it to one or two sentences, kept it very short, very succinct. So that, you know, it was it was fair. So now it's her turn to comment back to me on what she heard me say. Time in. Mitch, what I hear you saying is that when we're out with our friends and I tell them that you don't make enough money, that it makes you feel like you're not a good provider, like you're not a man, like I don't love you. Okay. Time out again. Now, if this is something that was a wall and we couldn't talk about, imagine how I'm feeling right now. She just calmly replied back, you know, returned back to me what I had said to her. That's phenomenal for me. Now, just to show you how crazy this can get, I had a couple in my office and they were in their 50s and I had them doing this exercise. And so I told him, your wife's going to tell you something. When she gets done, all you have to do is say it back in your own words. And he said, okay. So she told him, you know, Bob or whatever, said this is what's, you know, and he got done, and I looked at him and said, okay, now just say it back in your own words. And he looked at her, and he looked at me, and he looked at her, and he looked at me, and he started crying. Fifty-some-year-old man. And what had happened was he had gotten used to shutting her out for so long that he could no longer hear what she had to say. He couldn't even remember what she said. I said, that's okay, that's okay. We got them all calmed down and everything. And then I said, okay, let's do it again. And so we did it again, and she said what she was going to say. And when they got all done... He had to repeat it back, and he looked at us again and started crying because he could no longer even hear his wife. So that's just crazy, isn't it? So now I've got out to Kim something that maybe was a hurt, something that I made up. She doesn't really do this. Now she's repeated it back to me. Okay, now it's her turn to, still. She has to give me a remnant. She has to throw me an olive branch. She has to do something and let me know something she can do to try to help this situation so that it's not a wall anymore. All right? Time in. Mitch, I'm sorry that I hurt you like that. I don't want to make you feel that way. And so I will try to pay better attention to the words that I say and um, not treat you that way. Okay. Pretty cool. So that's half of your first safe time right there. Now we're going to flip it around and Kim is going to do, uh, do one for me. Okay. Okay. Um, Mitch, when we get together with friends and you make fun of my body, it makes me feel... Um, like you don't love me and like I'm not important to you. Wow, Kim. What I heard you say was when we get together with friends and I make fun of your body, it makes it makes you feel like I don't love you and I don't care about you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to take a time out here. I don't want to teach you something. If there's something that's really big and it's ingrained in you and it's going to be hard, if I tell her, okay, I'll never do that again, but then I do it, she could be upset, right? So let me show you how to do that in, in the right way, okay? Time in. Uh, Kim, I grew up in a house where I guess that was the norm, was doing stuff like that. And it would only make sense that would hurt you. I can tell you that I will try with everything I am not to do that in, to you anymore. In the event that I ever do that again, I give you permission. When we get home, I want you to tell me about it. And I promise I will get it stopped eventually. Okay? Okay. Okay. So that's how you remedy that. Okay. So that's a little bit about how safe time works. Um, also, there's two different tips that we want to give you about safe time. The, the first thing is, if you have safe time planned for Wednesday night at, say, 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock, and um, something happens on Monday, on Monday night, it just you know makes it want to pop that vein in your neck, you know, you get really upset. Don't don't handle it then. Wait till Wednesday night. And there's two reasons for that that you want to wait. The first one is you're going to be calmer at that time. And the second thing is you're, there's a good chance you're going to find out on Wednesday night that that thing that really had you hyped up on Monday isn't even an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good lesson to learn. That's a really good lesson to learn. One last little tip. If you have safe time planned and one of you has had a really lousy day and you're tired and you're grouchy and you're just not set up for it, uh, just don't do it. Just just postpone it to a little bit later date. Okay. 
So that's what Safe Time does. Hey, go to our resource page at keepingthevows.com and we have the PDF of Safe Time. You can just download it there. It's everything we've talked about and that'll help you get uh, going with it and get started with it. Share it with your friends. By all means, if you like what we're doing, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe, make sure you tell other people about it. I know that I can learn things from you. Hopefully you can learn something from me and from us. And uh, just have a great day. God bless.